Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to the Old Bones at Baptist Church Sunday School. Welcome to the Word of Scripture. Psalms 55. Read the Psalms 55. Read the Psalms. It's going to read a few verses here. Give ear to my prayer, O God, and hide not thyself from my supplication. Attend unto me and hear me. Make a noise. Because of the voice of the enemy, because of the oppression of the weak, for they that cast iniquity upon me, and in wrath they hate me. Make my heart a sore pain within me, and the terror of death are fallen upon me. Fearless and tremble are come upon me, and horror hate overwhelm me. And I say, on that I have wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. Mother, then would I wander far and remain in the wilderness. I wouldn't hasten my escape from the wind, song, and tent. Destroy our Lord and divide thy tongue, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go about, hid upon the walls thereof. Mischievous also and sorrow are in the midst of it. Wickedness is in the midst thereof. Deceit and grill down depart not from the street. For it was not an enemy that reproached me, then I could have borne it, neither was it. He that hated me, that did magnify himself against me, then I would have hid myself from him. May the Lord have a blessing and read to his holy divine word. Psalm 55, from verse 1 down to verse 20. May we bow in the word of prayer. Father God, right now we ask you, Lord, to come and be in our midst, which we know that you are already here, Lord. And Lord, we be quick enough to give you all the praise, because all the praise is due unto your holy righteous name. And Lord, just search everyone that's gathered here right now to hear a word in your Sunday school lesson. And touch the teacher that's going to teach your word, Lord. And touch also the man that's going to bring your word this morning, Lord. And Father, I would just ask you to watch over everyone across the land and country. Watch over the ones that's gathered here right now. And bless their household for much good, I pray thee, Lord. And Lord, be in the midst and let each one go out to, to the polls to vote. And let them vote their conviction. And Lord, touch the candidates also, Lord, and give them the mind to seek after your word, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to turn our lesson over to Brother Theo. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you once again. Truly the best thing to be able to come together and say, Lord, Lord. Today, our lesson uh, here uh, is Upside Down Love. Upside Down Love. And the passages are John 13, 1 through 15, 34. The key verse today is, For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. This is John 13 and 15. Starting at John 13 and 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, and loved his own which were the world, he loved them unto the end. The supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Jesus. And I swear, sound of the sun, Jesus knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God and went to God. 
He rises from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he into Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know the answer. Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast not part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, He that is washed need not save the wash but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you. He called me Master and Lord, and ye say well, for I so I am. And I then, your Lord and Master, that wash your feet, ye you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. On the 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, and ye have loved one to another. The Lord bless the readings and the spirit of the Now as we go back to one, now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour has come, that he should depart out of this world to the Father, having loved his own which were in the world. He loved them unto the end. Now we know as they prepared for the Passover feast, uh, we know that the Pass Passover, the Israelites marked the doorfronts of their homes with the Lamb of Blood, so the death angel would pass over uh, their homes. On that night, the firstborn of the Egyptians uh, died. In the next day, they released the Israelites. So, as you see that they are preparing for this feast at this time, and he's in the room with the Israelites, uh, they are preparing at that time. He knows that he's preparing to die to save us, just as if the Israelites were saved from their slavery uh, after the Passover. Um, like I said, the night of the Passover would lead to Jesus' hour to sacrifice his life for our salvation, to save us from the penalty of sin. Amen. As we go into two, the supper being ended, the devil having now put into the hearts of Jesus, I should sign the son to betray him. As we see, he said, the devil put into his heart, went into him. That means Judas had opened himself to that. He opened himself to, uh, to sin, as we do as well. But we're not in, in, in total um, companionship with our Lord and Savior when we try. We open ourselves to, to sin and to Satan coming into us and, and, and uh, influence the things that we do. So we must have total concentration on the Lord and the Father. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so that He would be, He would fill up our hearts and there would be no space for nothing else to come in to influence us. Now, we see uh, Judas. Uh, which he was the son of Simon. I mean, Simon 
they called him Simon the Leaper. He was a member of the uh, Pharisees, and he was very wealthy, and well his son also was so wealthy. That can be played a little bit, a bit later. Let's be going to three. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand, and that he was come from God, and went to God. Now, Jesus is aware that all is on him. He knows this is all about me right now. This is something that I must do to say. He will show us all and set examples for his disciples on how to live, how to love. Now we go on to four. So he rises from supper and lays aside his garments and took a towel and he girded himself. Now when we talk about when we talk about girding himself, uh, Back at that time, when they prepared to fight, they would gird up. They had long robes, so they would take these robes and wrap it around them and tuck them in their belt and have their knees exposed so they would have, have to be able to move around and run without this robe uh, hindering them. So they were getting ready to fight. And when we think about soldiers, what, what do we see? What do we think about when soldiers are going out to fight? They are prepared. They know their mission. They show their strength and the power that they have. Um, we see also, uh, this has been spoken of several times in the Bible, but uh, he told, I told Job, couple of times. Gird up. Gird up when he was down. So you show your strength. Don't let him keep you down. Gird up. Prepare yourself. Be ready. And this is shown in Job uh, 38 and 3 and 40 and 7. It's time for him to stand up like a man and show his strength. And the Lord will show his strength at this time when he's buried up. Which is going to five. After he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with a towel, wherewith he was buried. So Jesus started up to show his strength. Then he washed the disciples' feet to show there is strength in service. There is strength in service. We must prepare for service. Even though he is preparing to die, he continued to show his love. This shows his love for us, and we should accept his love. Six days. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? <laughs> now, as, as Peter speaks, this shows that not all will understand simple acts of humility. At that time, washing of the feet was something that servants or slaves did. Never by the master. And we've seen examples in Mark 9, 34, 9, 54, where the disciples, disciples were consumed with power. They would look at the leader as being powerful, not as someone that would get on their knees and, and wash their feet. Mm -hmm. That's why Simon is, is questioning that. As we're going to seven. Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do knoweth not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. At this time, Jesus is providing a lesson for his disciples, a lesson of humility, 
in Saturday service. In 8, Peter said unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast not part with me. Jesus is there for you. He's there for us. But if you don't open your heart and let him in, you will be lost. He's there for all of us at all times. But we must accept him. We must accept him. And, and open up there. If we don't do that, once again, we are lost. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hand and my head. Now when we think of hand, this is a symbol of work and effort. And the head is the center of one's thing. But he said, he wants, if you're going to wash my feet, my hand, show me what how to work. My mind, show me how to pray. And mm-hmm. ten, Jesus said unto him, He that is washed, he is not saved to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all. The disciple of Christ already enjoyed a special relationship with him. Therefore, another bath is not needed, but cleansing from different uh, contractors along the way. So his, his teachings, all the examples that he has provided, the acceptance of the government, they have done. Yeah, the left. But he, he should betray him. Therefore said he, ye are not all clean. Even though he knew he was going to be betrayed, he served them all. In Matthew 5 and 45, it states, that ye may be children of the Father which is in heaven. For he marketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. As we see here, even though he was going to be portrayed by Jesus, he still served him the same. He opened himself up to everyone. He's there for everyone. The just and the unjust. Verse 12, it states, So after he had washed their feet, and had taken his garments, and was set down again, he said unto them, Know ye what I have done to you? What did he say? Can you see what I'm teaching you now? Do you know what I've done? Can you notice the examples that I said? 13. You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. You know who I am. It's this entity. You know me. You know who I am. 14. If I then, your Lord and Master, can wash your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. We should serve one another. This is He serves us. That's what we're here for. He loves us unconditionally. But we must have that same love for our brothers and sisters. Whoever yeah. they may be, however they treat us, however they act, we should be able to love one another. Yeah. Put that above all things. For I have given you an example that you should do so as I have done to you also. We must follow the example. He has shown us how to serve. And uh, we have been given a tool that uh, shows us examples of every part of life that we live. The Bible. All the people that we read about, the nations we study, the covenants, how people treat one another. It's all in the Bible. It's all in that. For us, how to love, 
Now, this it jumps to 34 at this time. But we see in 16 to 33, he lets them know that he knows his betrayer. And after Jesus takes the bread, Satan enters into him. Jesus sends him on the way at this time. In John 13 and 27, it states, Now after the, the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Then Jesus said to him, What you do, do quickly. As we move to 34, and it states, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. At this time, he had presented a new standard of love. The servant like selfless love that Christians display toward one another. <coughs> Witness to the world that they are true disciples. Mm -hmm. This is how we set ourselves apart. The way we love, the world can see who we are by the love that we show. Not hate, not condemning others, but showing them love. Showing them love. Not everyone has the knowledge uh, that we have. It may be hard to believe that some of us, but some people probably have never picked up a thought. Okay. Then there's some that know more than we know. <laughs> but they just choose to ignore. They go on. But you can't let judgment, pettiness get in the way of, of how we treat them. You should show everyone that we come to contact the love of Christ. How he loves us. Okay. And how we should love everyone that we come to contact. Right, it's not always easy to show love. People treat you dirty. People do things that, uh, that, that you wouldn't believe. It is difficult at times to, to show that love. Yes, it is. But we have to. That's what we've been taught to do. We've been taught to do. So we love it. And there may be a case where people say, well, man, I get that. And, you know, they may not think about it then, but later down the road, it's, yeah, I did all that to you, I did all that to her. And, uh, and she or him, they still show their care to me. Even later I was in this. Still it might be a point in their life where they make a change. You never know. It might be 10 years down the road and there's somewhere and something's going on in their brain. You just never know. 35 states. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, that ye have loved one to another. Through your love, all men will know that you are a disciple of Jesus Christ. He's given us his word. He died on the cross for us. Then we can share it throughout the world. He showed us his love. That's what we're charged with. So love one another. Love one another. Our service must be done in love. We must examine ourselves to know who we are and what we offer to the world. So take time to think about who you are, what you have to offer. What are your special gifts and what are your special talents? There's many ways to show love. And the Lord has blessed us all with different talents. And that's how. Some of you may have a special gift to cook. 
We have people we see all the time. I restored all the time of people out feeding them for the public. That's their gift. That's how they show love to the brothers and sisters. Some people can care for them. Some people call them people. That's how they explain so, examine yourself. Love Amen. Thank you for the time. And thank the Lord for the word that He has 